quickly now because I'm also very mindful of the clock that's looming uh, large. Uh, Swarnam, Nepal, also a critical, critically important, certainly in that part of the world, hydro resources and so on, but also a least developed country. Yeah. Again, with particular finance, if not anything else, challenges. Thank you, uh, Elizabeth. Yes, so I come from Nepal, which sees itself as the custodian of the central Himalayas, eight of the 10 highest mountains in the world, including Everest. And the glaciers that flow from those Himalayas uh, feed rivers that can generate up to 100,000 megawatts of clean electricity, which can power all our domestic needs, but also help displace dirty sources of fuel in fast growing India and Bangladesh, right? So uh, yet because of climate change, which we have not contributed to at all, uh, we are bearing the brunt because those very glaciers are melting, are receding. There are some uh, dire predictions from uh, international organizations like AC Mode. So our mantra uh, in, uh, in uh, Nepal has been, well, uh, all uh, uh, net zero paths uh, lead uh, are led through clean electricity, right? So as, as, a, as a columnist in the New York Times put it memorably, you make electricity clean, you make much more clean electricity, and you make almost everything run on electricity. So that's the solution, part of the solution that we offer, uh, not just to our own country, but the entire region and possibly uh, the globe. Now, Per capita income wise, we're the second poorest uh, on the continent. And uh, yet the paradox is more than 90% of our people already way ahead of the SDG uh, deadlines have access to electricity, but these are basic appliances and, electric, uh, and lighting. Now, what we need to do is, you know, all the cooking installations should be uh, electric and eventually, of course, the transport fleet and then the industrial, then we increase uh, the consumption uh, of uh, clean uh, electricity. But there are three hurdles. First is finance, as has been highlighted. Second is technology. And third, which has not been mentioned so far, are the geopolitical imperatives as well. Nepal, uh, very strategically located between China and India. So as India-China rivalry uh, heats up, as US-China rivalry heats up, this very resource is also caught somewhere in between. I don't have time into, to go into detail, but let me just mention that um, you know the, the finance would impact uh, how we um, develop you know, simultaneously all the uh, components of the energy value chain, right? So it's not just producing, but distributing, storing, and using that clean electricity uh, usefully. So we don't have the money yet, and this is where we need to pair uh, both uh, technology and finance with de-risking and depoliticizing as well. Uh, geographically very hostile. Uh, there are parts of the country where, you know, so-called last mile connectivity challenges. So that would demand a distributed generation at the municipal level. So because we can't extend the national grid to every every single settlement. Again, finance and technology would, would come into the picture. And the third is the, the very Himalayas, the geology of, uh, of uh, production uh, requires us to trade uh, electricity in a very amiable, constructive, through a possibly a regional uh, uh, grid with India and Bangladesh and the rest of South Asia. Um, there's a, you know, in, let me just give you an example of how we complement India's peak demand uh, for electricity in November. It starts at seven o'clock and lasts for one hour. And in the summer, uh, it starts at about eight o'clock and lasts till uh, midnight, right? So we have the ability to even that out, Nepal, right? And um, this um, and the aggressive manner with, with which India is sort of expanding its renewable capacity still needs a flexible uh, generation like hydropower, which can stabilize uh, its demand uh, for peak power, right? So there's a lot of complementarity uh, for regional trade, but a lot of the folks who are interested in developing Nepal, poor country by definition doesn't have uh, much money. So, you know, dedicated to climate, uh, uh, there's very little. But one thing I'm quite uh, proud of in my own country is we tax uh, fossil uh, fuel dependent vehicles of punitive uh, tariff rate of almost 250%. It was purely born out of revenue needs for the country, but now it can be doffed into a, a genuine uh, carbon uh, tax. But given the fungibility of public finance, you can't really then channel it to, you know, uh, to fight climate change. It's used to meet uh, mm. civil servant salaries. Uh, but I, I wish there's a direct, uh, a direct linkage can be forged.